I would like to take this opportunity to welcome each one of you and thank you for coming today to this gathering of the Bangladeshi diaspora in Los Angeles. We are privileged to have Ambassador Mazenai with us today to discuss how Bangladeshi diaspora can continue to expand the U.S.-Bangladesh relationship in terms of business, culture, social and education development. In addition, he is very excited to meet all of you to represent the Bangladeshi diaspora in the United States. As many of you know, I have spent most of my life in Bangladesh or doing business between Bangladesh and United States. And it is the success and continued growth of Bangladesh which has allowed me and my children this opportunity. The Bangladeshi economy has experienced both macroeconomic stability and robust economic growth since the 1990s. Characterized by record low rate of inflation, an unprecedented buildup of external reserves and an improved resource position of the government. Agriculture has been replaced by growth in services, manufacturing, and IT opportunities. USBBF's mission is in line with Ambassador Mazana's goal to promote, foster, advance business and entrepreneurship between the USA and Bangladesh. We look to also support business, commercial, economic, cultural, and education interests of local communities related to Bangladesh in USA through network, education, and community representation. To develop both cultural education and social awareness of Bangladeshi causes, both in Bangladesh and USA. To mention a few educational programs USBBF supports, junior schools in Bola and Patwakali, computer learning centers in Chiragong and Barisa, and we can go long, but I'll stop here. And this evening we have planned to have an open and free discussion focused on how to improve U.S.-Bangladesh relationship, and the ambassador would love to hear from all of you. It's a real honor to be here uh, with all of you, and particularly with uh, Ambassador Bozana and his wife. I made my first trip to Bangladesh in January of 2003 when I participated in the U.S. trade show at the Dhaka Sheraton, which is co-sponsored by AmCham and the U.S. Trade Center, which is housed in the embassy in Dhaka. And I got to say, before that, you were a farm boy in Iowa, and I was a farm boy in Indiana oh, about the same time. You were not <laughs> Uh, he has served a lot in Africa, Zambia, Zaire, uh, he served in India, Pakistan, he had a previous assignment in Bangladesh, and he served in Angola, and then last year in 2011 he, was, uh, he became the ambassador to Bangladesh. Uh, as I mentioned, he's from Dubuque, Iowa, a farm boy from there, married over 40 years, he and his wife Grace, who is with us here tonight, have two children. Please join me in welcoming, welcoming Ambassador Dan Lozena. I spent my uh, childhood chasing cows. Thank you for the very kind uh, introduction. Uh, Feroz Bai is here. Uh, thank you, thank you to your lovely wife, uh, your two boys, and your daughter-in-law. Uh, we're very happy to be here. I want to introduce my wife, Grace, right here. I think I met everybody already. She's made the uh, I have two other people with me. I see you. There has never been anybody like me to decide. <laughs> and let me tell you why. Because he is the first officer in the State Department over 200 years whose focus is on reaching out to the diaspora and how the diaspora can promote America's relations with the rest of the world. Washington, Washington, that's the biggest change in 10 years vis-a-vis Juan -vis Because when we lived there before, people like Grace and me, we loved Bangladesh and other people. But how do you say this in a nice way? <laughs> Bangladesh. 
September 12, 2001, everything changed. The day after. The country that didn't really seem to make it on the scope was front and center on the scope of America's interest and remains there to this day. Let me explain. Bangladesh matters strategically to the United States of America. One. Bangladesh, the seventh largest country, the seventh largest country in the world, home of the fourth largest Muslim population in the world, is a tolerant, moderate, secular, democratic alternative to violent extremism in a very turbulent part of the world. Bangladesh matters to America. As Bangladesh reaches out and engages with its neighbors, India, Nepal, Pakistan, even Burma, China. Those relationships, deepening relationships, promote stability in the region. Bangladesh is the largest, largest, largest contributor of forces to international peacekeeping. Two, or th two weeks ago, 10,746 Bangladeshi boots on the ground, police and military in nine different operations, including an all-women's uh, police detachment. How's that? Yes, be impressed. It is great. Let's give a hand to that. Thank you. Lifetime, the population of the world will be nine billion. I did not say to her, Madam, you're two years older than I am. <laughs> I decided that was not career enhancing. <laughs> but she said it is in the interest of America that nine billion people can eat properly. That interest will not be achieved if the world's seventh largest country cannot feed itself. Bangladesh matters to America. Bangladesh matters to America for trade and investment. I was just saying a moment ago, one billion dollars of American exports last year, double the previous year, 9,000 US jobs. Next three years, double again. And I'm looking at the very people who are gonna make that happen. Double it again, another 9,000 American jobs. We have a values agenda, democracy, respect for human right, rights. We have a humanitarian agenda. Nobody, Americans especially, likes to see other people suffer. So we have built or rebuilt, listen to this, listen to this, 547 cyclone shelters. And we are right now building, we are building 116 more. You realize we means you. Now I'm watching who's making eye contact. Bangladesh that is prosperous, that is healthy, that is democratic. <coughs> Peaceful, secure, prosperous, healthy, democratic. We promote that Bangladesh because that's good for America, because that's good for South Asia, because, most importantly, that's good for the people of Bangladesh. That's what we do. We need to celebrate partnership in uh, combating violent extremism, in fighting terrorism. She came to celebrate partnership in promoting agriculture production and in helping people have the, the means to acquire food. Partnership Dialogue took place three weeks ago in Washington. Grand success. Bangladeshi side was headed by Foreign Secretary Kais, 
U.S. side by Wendy Sherman, Under Secretary Wendy Sherman. And they reviewed all of these areas of partnership, and they looked at the frictions as well. You know the friction, Grameen Bank. That's a friction in our partnership, in our relationship. People like me feel very attached to the Grameen philosophy. It's more than microcredit, it's a way of life for 8.3 million borrowers, of whom 8.1 million are women. So it's a friction between America and Bangladesh. The Rohingya, refugees from Burma, from Myanmar, a friction between the United States and Bangladesh. Traditionally, Bangladesh has welcomed uh, refugees, remembering well only 41 years ago when 10 million Bangladeshis sought refuge in India. But Bangladesh has changed its tradition and now closes the door in the face of people fleeing violence in Burma. That's a friction. Labor issues are another friction despite the considerable progress which we can talk about uh, freedom of association remains uh, friction. Uh, so we can talk about all of those. I'm hopeful each one uh, can uh, be worked out soon. <coughs> Envision a middle income Bangladesh. I reject the notion that Bangladesh is a poor country. It is not true. It is a country filled with poor people. That's a different thing. Bangladesh is not a poor. Bangladesh has rich soil, more rich than my home state of Iowa, and it pains me to say it. Bangladesh has water. It has a three growing seasons. Bangladesh has significant gas reserves. Bangladesh has huge coal deposits. Beautiful, hard, low sulfur coal. Not being uh, developed, that's a as I did His excellent, Excellency President Zila Rahman. When I gave him my certificate, my uh, credentials, I said, Mr. President, you tell me. I said, I have a, uh, a question for you. You tell me the people more energetic, more dynamic, more creative, more generous, more entre entrepreneurial, more resilient more tough than the people of Bangladesh. Of course, there are no people. Bangladesh is a rich country. I believe Bangladesh, given these, this natural wealth, should be a middle income. I call it the uh, Shonarban. The golden one. I call it the next Asian type, the royal paper, which I've never seen in my entire life. <laughs> I'm not convinced it even exists in the world replacing China. It means that Bangladesh is the number one, number one, number one exporter of household textiles replacing China. It means that Bangladesh is a major player in building small and medium freighters. Bangladesh has found that little niche. Nobody else was doing it. Ah, they filled it. It means Bangladesh is a major, major global player in generic pharmaceutical production, in frozen fish and shrimp exports, in footwear, wonderful Italian quality uh, footwear, in finished leather goods, in bone china, in silk, in jute, in uh, IT. Oh, the list goes on and on. You get the idea. Of those problems, however, is resolved. Grace and I have lived in places with problems that could not be solved. By anybody, God, him, or herself, couldn't solve it. That is not bonded. Every one of those 
challenges I cited is solvable. Whether they will be or not, that's a different question. We can talk about that, but they uh, are solvable. As I have that vision of Bangladesh as the next Asian society, I see you, the diaspora, as key players in making that vision a reality. You are the ones with the cultural and the language and the family ties to Bangladesh. You are the ones that can bring the best of America, the problem solving uh, uh, approach of America, the resources of America, the technology of America, the money of America. You can bring that to bear in Bangladesh to create, help create the next day. Good to be here. I want to thank uh, Feroz and Jamila and the wonderful family for inviting us into your gorgeous <coughs> home. You know, we actually, I share a common Gujarati connection and heritage with Bukaki. So next time I talk to my mom, I'm going to say, you know, I found my long lost Gujarati family in, in Brentwood, and they said I could move into their house. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to have to uh, change my address. Um, thank uh, all of you for, for coming. Um, you all are very, very key, as the ambassador noted, to, to our mission for the future. So as the ambassador noted, my role as senior advisor includes uh, a very strong focus on making sure that we stay engaged, fully engaged with the diaspora and the community. And you may ask, why is the State Department a government agency that's focused on international relations and outward facing communities back here in America, where it's very simple. The world has changed. Governments cannot do everything alone, like it is. So we have to work in partnership. It's a complicated world with multi-layered issues and challenges that require multi-stakeholder solutions. And we see all of you as the key stakeholder. In fact, this directive comes from the highest levels of the government. Secretary Clinton has made diaspora engagement one of the key prongs of her vision for smart power, which is, again, making sure that governments work in partnership with civil society and diaspora groups. So Secretary Clinton has held two global diaspora forums over the last uh, two years at the State Department. Composed of Bangladeshi Americans and folks in Bangladesh put forward a business plan for a business that involves activities in Bangladesh. And I could talk to you more in detail afterwards, but that's really a, the idea that we prize money, we are gonna bring private sector players to the table, so it's really a joint public-private approach. And the idea is, of course, to reward the smart business plans, and the prize money is important. But really, I think the more important thing is to help change the way people look at Bangladesh, to catalyze new thinking about the country, in effect, in some ways, create a stronger, new narrative that meets the great potential that my country has. So that's one, entrepreneurship. The second is philanthropy. So there's a lot of great civil society work, great NGOs that work across all areas from healthcare to education and everything in between. And I know many of you in the diaspora want to support these benefits for the U.S. and Bangladesh and anyone interested in Bangladesh. So those are two specific projects that we have in mind that we're thinking through, and I really would like to get input from you again tonight and afterwards, um, because you are the experts, as the ambassador said. You have the local knowledge, you have the local networks, and so we want to tap into that and make sure that we craft these projects in the right way that meets the actual needs, on the ground needs of Bangladesh, and make sure to tap the resources of the diaspora in the most strategic, targeted fashion. So I hope we can continue this conversation tonight. Uh, to welcome His Excellency, Dan Zena, with the White Grace. I, on behalf of our host, uh, Mr. Gross Fabri, and Jamila Fabri, Mr. Sanz, uh, take the opportunity and welcome you here to this uh, I, I am the president, current president of the US Bangladesh Business Forum, as Mr. Kuhl is saying that uh, we do the same. We were established in uh, 2000, uh, 2006, uh, and until to this day, 
we are doing a bilateral trade agreement between Bangladesh and uh, challenges of doing business in Bangladesh that every person in here knows better than I do. Uh, and it was one of those I listed off uh, is rule of law. Because it's rule of law, contract enforcement, that protects your investment. And that's a major challenge uh, in Bangladesh. Uh, you know that and I know that. And the embassy does not have a, 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 a wand or any other mechanism that can safeguard your investment. That is the risk that goes with the very high return that also goes with doing business in Bangladesh, which you also know about. Uh, and I would spend, uh, I don't know, a third of my time engaged with Washington. When you say Washington, Washington has many faces. You got the congressional side, you got the executive branch, you have White House staff, you've got State Department, and you have a multitude of agencies. Uh, Marvis's uh, Department of Justice, Peace Corps is one of my challenges at the moment, uh, and, and others. That would be my biggest challenge. Uh, Bangladesh uh, itself gives me so many rewards. Grace and I travel all the time. That's, that is the benefit. Uh, sometimes uh, the government can be uh, frustrating, but that goes with the turf. It works out in the end. Thank you. Uh, some free, some with uh, uh, fees that are uh, very reasonable, and we can help you so much. Bangladeshi Americans, of course, have a leg up on everybody else because you already have entree into this society. But we know things too. Min at a minimum, send us an email, talk to our guys. It'll be an hour, well worth your time. If you want to go beyond that, we'll go as far as you want to go. Then, of course, the American government has its own resources. Uh, uh, Exim Bank, uh, Overseas Private uh, Investment Corporation, uh, all sorts of resources like that to help as well. This is where if it's a student who happens to be going to Dhaka or someone else in Bangladesh over the summer, or over Christmas breaks, is, hey, I have this amount of time, you know, what do you, NGO A or B, what do you need? And this platform <coughs> can help facilitate that. So really, I think it's about, again, getting the pool together of the diaspora folks and others who want to contribute, matching them with a vetted pool of NGOs and other organizations, putting them together, and then we just get out of the way, and the things that will come out of that will be absolutely fantastic. And just quickly, obviously on the entrepreneurship side, with this business plan competition, if they're you know sort of old enough and have an idea, there's no reason why they can't apply uh, to the business plan competition. So.